not attempt any of the stunts you're about to see. Just when all hope seemed lost, message of a new message to an unknown old great world. Freaking better make your hair boys coming to you live all the way from the farm and today we are working on this van. Yes, I need my daily driver back so we are back to rebuilding this engine, finally. And it's actually a pretty nice day today, it's not too windy, it's not raining and it's not damp and cold. And chop here and chop there on my rad support. Then what I'm going to do is remove all the wire looms in there, if you don't know what a wire loom is. It's the plastic stuff that goes around your wires. Anyhow, uh, these vans are notorious for misfire problems and wiring problems. So while I have access to everything like this, I'm going to uh, go through everything and make sure it's all good. And then I'm going to tie up my brake lines that are right down there. Make them a little bit neater than they are. And I have my new engine sitting right here. I can bolt my manifolds to it now that I have manifold bolts. Lift up the block, slide it in through that radiator support, put her in place, bolt her up, and we are getting back to putting this engine back together and getting this van on the road. All right, so this here is my handy dandy 20 volt DeWalt cordless Sawzall. I picked this sucker up for 29 bucks from the second hand shop and I'm gonna give it my first test right now. <laughs> She works good. I now have a lot more room to get that engine in there. And this piece will be welded back in later. All right, so if you look down in there now, you can see all new loom, all new tape. I've went through every bit of the wiring harness for this engine, and I made sure that everything was good. All right, so here's my engine in storage here in the trailer. I really need to get the heads on, head gaskets in, get the manifolds on, spark plugs in, and then I can put the engine mounts on down here, put a real oil filter on it, and then once I have all that done, I can bring it over here, slide it in through my rod support gap. I know progress has been slow. I really want this engine running as bad as you do, believe that. This is my daily driver. Anyhow, it just makes no sense to put an engine in there and not check the wires. It makes no sense to put the engine in there and not go through everything that's underneath it while you can access it. So I am making things slower than they need to be, but I'm trying to do the best job I can. So stick with me while I do that. You see that Y pipe right there? It needs to be welded. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to get a camera shot of this, but I will do my best. There she is, she's welded up, it's not pretty. I have hot slag in my ear that's burning the shit out of my eardrum right now, but what can you do? I'll tell you right now, boys and girls, you wanna be a mechanic, get a hoist. Don't ever try and cram yourself underneath the vehicle with a welding mask to weld, because it does not work. Here's my engine, you can see the spray grease that was put into the cylinders really took care of the rust and made sure that nothing happened. Here's a nice clean stream of the unknown auction oil that protected the engine but is not the right grade for this engine. Well, it might be. I don't know what it is. All of the unknown auction oil is out of this engine and unfortunately I just noticed that one of the bolts for the oil pan is broken off which I guess makes up my mind on whether I'm removing the oil pan or not to replace the gasket. She is getting removed and I'm gonna have to drill that bolt out or hopefully grab some uh, some of the stud with vice grips, I don't know. Alright so I have the oil pan back on, the gasket's in place and you can see there's five bolts on each side. You torque these to 10 foot pounds and you just work from the center out side to side. So I removed the chrome oil filter, lost 50 horsepower right there. I have a new oil pan gasket on. I have a new oil filter, a proper one. Uh, the Harley Davidson one is fun but I'm not going to rebuild an engine and put a wrong part on it just in case. Anyhow. Now I can put the heads on, which means I need to clean all the grease out of the cylinders and uh, clean up this surface right here for any paint or grease that's on there. 
and same thing for the other side here all right finally getting to the heads i have a set of dnj head bolts they're brand new stretch bolts one for every hole i never reuse head bolts anyhow i have brand new head gaskets right there I have all of the grease cleaned out of the cylinders, the cylinder mating surface, or the gasket mating surface, which is this area. It's all prepped. I have the oily residue taken off of it, and same with this side. It now has its heads on. All of the gasket mating surfaces, like here, 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 and here for the valve covers. They're all cleaned up and ready. Right now, I'm about to put... Uh, the lifters in they're right here I'm gonna clean them up clean up the push rods check them I'll show you how to check them clean up the rockers which are not roller rockers not yet anyway maybe someday but I doubt it and you may be asking yourself why do I doubt that this engine will ever receive roller rockers the reason for that is if I ever have to put another engine in this van it's getting a cat diesel all right so I have a little container of gas and one of fresh oil these are lifters, roller lifters, and you can see that there's a hole for oil. Where is it? Right there. So what I'm going to do before I install these is I'm going to soak them in this gas, make sure I roll the roller around and get all the old oil out, and then I'm going to blow it off with the blow gun, blow out that hole right there, and that hole right there to make sure oil can come up through the push rods when it has to. Then I'm going to dunk it in the oil and put it in the spot. And if you come over here to the engine, you can see they go in there, in there, blah, blah, blah. These should all be kept in order the way they came out, which I had all of mine in order. So they all go back in there and then we will check the push rods and reuse them if they're good. Don't forget which side's up and which side's down. It is important. So you wipe all that off. Then you check the end. Make sure it's nice and round and shiny. It's not hammered or anything like that. Next, you want to take a blowgun. Put it through. Make sure there's no obstructions. Progress is good today. At least it's good on the engine. The video not so much. I would love to show you guys exactly how you rebuild this engine with every single step in detail. But this video didn't quite go as planned. This engine was supposed to be sitting on an engine stand, not in a trailer. Anyhow, there will be more engines, so I'm going to get this boring stock engine done and get it in that van so we can get on to exciting stuff. Right there, I have all of my rockers lined up. It's basically as easy as cleaning them, keeping them in order, oiling them before you install them, and putting them back where they came from, which is right here. I have all my push rods. They're all cleaned and checked, installed, and if you don't know what happens, I will show you. Down inside here, not this thing, but down inside there, there's a camshaft, and when the cam turns, it has different lobes on it that push up on these because they're offset lobes. So it pushes up on those and opens like that. There's valves down underneath those springs. I showed you those in an earlier video. So what's going on is when the cam turns down there, it pushes on these push rods when the offset portion of the cam turns around and it forces these rockers to tilt push down on the spring that the valve is attached to and open the valve. You can't tell by looking on camera but all of these rockers have been torqued down to 20 foot-pounds. I have the valve covers washed and if you come over here I have brand new valve cover seals. They're very easy to put in and we are now ready to close this engine in and keep all of the crap out. You have any shout outs to give? I heard you got a big new fan, or a new big fan. Oh yeah, hi Trudy, how you doing? Anyhow, what's up? Big, big shout out to the family, and especially those who share the damn video. Love it, thank you very much, much appreciated, and I'll talk to you soon.
So if you don't know what an EGR is, it stands for Exhaust Gas Recirculation, which means that if the EGR is opened by the computer, the exhaust gases can come out through one hole, through the EGR, back into the other hole, and cool down the cylinders on the engine, and burn whatever burnables are left in the exhaust gases. Personally, I don't really see the point of pumping exhaust gases into a cylinder to cool it, but the experts say that's what you do. Now, I did have an old, old truck with an EGR. I removed it before and I absolutely loved the idea, which is why I would consider doing it to this one. But, probably not when uh, the whole engine's been rebuilt, you know. Once she's running good, I'll take the gamble and remove it, but right now... Alright, so if you come over here, you can see I have two EGRs. One is fairly new that I got from my dad. The other one is an old junker that doesn't work. Yes, they both look sooty and crusty, but it doesn't take very long for that to happen when you're pumping uh, exhaust gases through it. Anyhow, I'm going to show you how to check them. So this is a spring-loaded pin right there that the computer tells to open and let gases in or not. And it needs to seat, right? So you can see the spring in this one works really good and sends the pin back up to seal the hole. Here's the old one that came with the engine. Yeah, and you can see, yeah, it's not coming back up to seat. The spring barely works. That one is junk. And I'm going to clean this one up right now and paint it and install it. Not that she really needs paint, but whatever. Now that I've shown you how to check your EGR, I'm going to show you that you can clean your EGR. The one that was originally on this engine may have been worth cleaning and trying, but I have a lot more faith in this one because I could tell by the lack of rust, it's fairly new. Now, I have a little margarine container of gas. I'm going to set this in there and let all the carbon soak, and then I'm going to blow it out in about 20 minutes after it's good and wet and uh, probably all of that carbon and soot will blow right out. It's now after lunch. I still do not have this engine in. I have spent an absolute bundle of time cleaning and painting and all that. Yeah. Anyhow, whatever. You know, you're not going to get to see the entire process with this. It would have been a lot better to have the engine on the stand. But as I told you in an earlier video, the stand is occupied with my other engine. This engine kind of sucks anyway. There's nothing real uh, custom or race or spectacular about it. So you know what? It's not really an exciting engine to teach you a rebuild with anyway. Uh, yeah, anyhow, I'll show you what I have going on here. And uh, hopefully this engine goes in the van today. I'm not going to drive it or get it running yet, but... I would like to see it sitting in the van today. Yeah, it's like 2 o'clock right now. I haven't got much done since the last clip I did hours ago when I polished off this EGR gasket mating surface. I've been doing all kinds of stuff like washing the intake inside and out and uh, cleaning fuel injectors and painting manifolds and this bar that holds my transfer case in place from the engine block, which is weird without a cross member. Anyhow, yeah, that paint on those manifolds is probably not going to stay, at least the silver won't. I put POR15 underneath it. It's just a test. I was originally going to put uh, headers on this engine, but the headers that I got were for an old uh, 350 style motor. And I was going to modify them to be for a V6, but the holes in the friggin' heads don't line up, and there's two extra cylinders on the headers and all that, so it's really just not worth the effort. And I really want this done. If I haven't told you yet, I really want this done. I want it done like yesterday, like the day before the silo came, which was not yesterday, but I wish this thing was done, because I got other things to do before we get to the silo, and uh, yeah. I really can't wait for that. So this has not been a priority. The video has not been a priority to teach you everything there is to teach you about rebuilding an engine. The plan here is to get this boring ass engine done back in this van running so that we can make kick-ass interesting videos which are coming.
Believe me, they are coming. This is not the one. <laughs> Alright, this is like day five of rebuilding this engine. It's been pretty crappy. I would have really liked to show you a detailed process of rebuilding it, but it was really hard to show you that while it's sitting inside that trailer. There will be more engines to come, absolutely positively. The other problem is, uh, yeah, there's really not a whole lot of room in this van to even show you anything in there. So, I know you probably really wanted to see this happen, but trust me, just getting her done and skipping some footage will be worth it because we are almost on to bigger and better things. Alright, so if you want to know why I'm sick and tired of doing this job, I'm about to show you. That's right folks, I have the engine lift inside the f***ing van! But, it did the job. It was not easy, but it was also not as hard as I expected it to be. There you go. Alright, so here's the engine. It's 8 o'clock at night right now on Friday. I'm beat. I can't take it anymore. As you can see, she's in there. It doesn't look like it's hooked up, but everything is pretty much hooked up. All that's really left is uh, the plumbing. I have to put the rods in, fill it with fluids, and uh, yeah, then we can try it. And then I need to weld the rod support back in and do some body work on the front. You can see this non-removable uh, rod support is pretty crappy, so I'm going to beef it up and fix it. And uh, I'm not even sure if I'm going to get this video up tonight. It's 8 o'clock. i got to be up early tomorrow morning and uh, get some things done if I'm going to get this van running tomorrow, which I really want to. I can't wait. Anyhow, uh, yeah, there's not a whole lot to say. I know that the videos have been missing, but, you know, what can you do? There's really not any good way to show you this engine in the trailer or the engine in the van. So, I don't know what to tell you. I could sit here and do talking vlogs, but you'll probably just unsubscribe. So, rather than have you unsubscribe, I've decided to just make you wait. But don't worry, because soon the silo will be up. And every single day will be a day where I don't have to do this. Stupid van. I was really looking forward to summer and it sure as heck wasn't because I wanted to rebuild an engine, a stock engine, on something that's not that custom. It's holding me up big time. And believe me, I want to get to fun fabrication projects just as much as you do. And uh, we are almost there. We're almost there. Hopefully this thing will be running tomorrow. Maybe one more day to get the rod support welded in and get the grill and stuff back on. But uh, after that, I gotta cut wood for about a week. And then after that, pouring concrete for the silo. And then after that, oh, lots of cool stuff. And then after that, five window. Yeah! <laughs> Anyhow, comment, rate, subscribe. Sorry I made you wait and share the damn video if you're not too pissed off at me. Woo! Villains, I say to you now, knock off all that evil!